Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, first I'd like to uh, thank uh, Anna for the invitation uh, to this wonderful conference. Uh, my name is Thomas Otten, I'm an archaeologist and uh, not uh, experienced in synagogue architecture and uh, reconstructions, but my famous colleague Christiane and her other colleagues uh, are. So uh, we're dealing with the museum's project, the MIGWA, the Museum in the Quarter, Jewish Museum in the Archaeological Quarter, Cologne. Uh, which uh, took place uh, concretely in 2010 in uh, Cologne from the plannings and we try uh, to open the museum in 2020. Uh, the museum is located in the city of Cologne, at the core and the heart of Cologne. Cologne is always a little bit special, I mean the mentality of the Cologne people. So they would say we have two hearts. Of course, the Cologne Cathedral, but the second one is the place of the town hall and the place where since 130 years excavations planned and not planned took place and the knowledge about the monuments there, the Roman Praetorium and the medieval Jewish quarter and the late medieval and modern settlements of the city of Cologne, even craftsmen, uh, especially goldsmith, uh, is very well known and documented since this time, but uh, the in initial uh, excavations, this is a view from the neighbor, the Walraf Richards Museum on the place, on the right side, the historical town hall, and at uh, the top of the picture, this is the modern building of the 1960 years, uh, which was erected over the excavations of Otto Doppelfeld, and that was the name of the colleague uh, uh, John Seligman and also uh, our colleague uh, Samuel Gruber uh, pointed on the excavations of the post-World War time, huge excavations which were possible because the city um, decided not to reconstruct uh, buildings. It was a dense settled uh, area in the middle of the town but to let it as a free, as an open space uh, for the public. And then Doppelfeld uh, excavated over three years their huge areas of the medieval Jewish quarter of the uh, modern structures of the city up to 1945, 44, 45, when the damages took place. And this is the reason why we are able to have, uh, or to pick up two ideas of Doppelfeld that were famous ideas and uh, that was his big success. Uh, the first one was to uh, install a protection building over the north uh, place uh, and the north part of the Roman Praetorium, which is like a museum since the 60 years. And the second idea was that he had always in his mind to combine this museum later and to, to along it to the Vaira Frischatz Museum over the whole uh, place uh, near the town hall to a big uh, archaeological parkour which will combine the Jewish medieval quarter also with the Roman artifacts and the modern ones. That was his idea and in 2010, this is a picture of the excavations of the 1950 years uh, and on the next slide you can see the drawings and the documentation of the synagogue uh, with the bima in the middle, in the center, and on the left side, the uh, uh, mikvah. Um, the idea was set uh, against, uh, there were big discussions in the city if uh, Cologne should do that, uh, should handle with this uh, project in the way that he mentioned it. And in 2010, we had the possibility, uh, I worked at this time for the government, uh, to have a project family and cultural and social uh, uh, aspects, and we could uh, set this project also. At this time, we started with a budget of uh, nearly uh, 35 million euros for the whole project. Now we are at 77, and we are not uh, at the end. And this is a picture of the year 2012. Uh, the tent, as you see, is uh, directly located over the, uh, um, the fragments and the ruins of the medieval synagogue. 
and you see in front of the tent a small glass pyramid. It's over the uh, mikva of also the medieval period, and you can see the dense uh, walls and uh, relics and remains uh, here in this uh, strategy free, which is uh, between 8, 10, sometimes 12 meter in the highness. So it's a very complicated um, uh, archaeological evidence which we have and where we have to deal also the archaeological parkour in it. So this is a picture that should uh, uh, some of you uh, be uh, a little bit uh, experienced with, uh, who knows Munich, our famous architects, Van der Lorch from Saarbrücken, they also built the synagogue and the Jewish museum in Munich. And the uh, architectural language which you see here in this picture is the same <laughs> than in Munich. And you can see uh, on the next uh, slide that the museum's building uh, is a little bit of reconstruction and repairing the urban organism of Cologne, uh, this free place which was never a real place in the way that it meant to be as a functionable place. Uh, and uh, the new museum will um, uh, reorganize this also. And this is a picture on the right side, you see on the base, base of uh, the archaeological data, we have a so-called Punktewolken scan, which means that all the 130 years of excavation were set in a data table to uh, reconstruct and to plan our archaeological parkour. And uh, the ground plan that you see with the red lines, the new uh, um, architecture of the museum's building is the whole archaeological parkour, which means 6,000 square meters of space and 600 meters of uh, the way through the archaeological remains. The concept of this museum from the architects was to erect a new building which is in the inner parts completely without uh, fundaments, uh, pillars and columns. So it's in a way like the late 50 years building, a real protection building over the archaeological remains so it don't um, uh, handle with the remains themselves. And the other parts, you can see the parkour in green, uh, are uh, constructed in the way that we deal with the originals, the narrative of the place itself, the heart of the city, of course. And we only show objects which are found in the direct circumstance of this uh, um, fundaments, walls and buildings. So the uh, um, uh, connection between the objects and the connection between the buildings is always present for the public to understand that this is not an archaeological museum which collects huge masses of objects there, but also only the ones uh, who were found directly in this field. This is a ground plan of the new museum's building uh, with the uh, our synagogue. Um, I have to look if the pointer works. It doesn't work, okay. But I, can, I think you can see it uh, there. With the, we have uh, four periods of the synagogue uh, with the beginning in the uh, early 11th uh, century up to the early 15th century. So now, yeah, here the synagogue and there is the mikvah. And you see the ground plan of the museum with exhibition uh, place here with the foyer and uh, yeah, the uh, substitutional um, uh, places and the entrance here on this place. You can see from the urban development aspect that there in front of the Renaissance entrance of the historical town hall, there is a new place or new court which is uh, which reconstruct the historical structure of the town, the same in the south at this side, to the left side to the Walraff Richards Museum. This um, isometric uh, picture shows uh, the structure of the future museum with the uh, parts of the exhibition where Christiane tells you a little bit about the um, concept of the uh, Jewish museum itself. 
uh, there is an open uh, space where you, you can see from this uh, uh, places here down in the archaeology as a big hall where all the uh, asp uh, the the views from above to the underground level are possible also on the parts of the mikveh and this is the beginning of the archaeological parkour on balcony where you can see the uh, synagogue as and the original uh, monument directly in front of you and uh, where we want to uh, translate to the public the results of the research work which uh, are still going on to reconstruct the different phases of the synagogue uh, which is not so easy. Uh, we installed an international uh, research program with uh, colleagues and specialists who are working on these uh, monuments uh, and who are experienced to help us in the different uh, uh, reconstruction models. And this is also a picture of the architects of the future um, parkour, where you can see the parts of the uh, beginning of the start of the uh, uh, ex exhibition to the medieval uh, Jewish quarter of Cologne. And of course, in vitrines, uh, important objects which were found in, for example, the de uh, uh, destruction layers of 1349, which is, as a date for Cologne, as important as for other places at this period. A short view on the periods of the synagogue. There was a big discussion about could it be late antique, because we all know uh, the decree of Constantine from 321, which um, tells us about uh, Jewish community for Cologne, but we can say actually that there's no archaeological evidence which is before the early 11th century, which deals also with the written sources that we are in the medieval age, which doesn't mean that the research work is, have been done, So, um, but uh, actually this is the point of view on this uh, monument and uh, the colleagues from the city themselves, they uh, also work hard on the reconstruction models that we want to show in the exhibition later. This is a methodologi methodological uh, view on how we deal with these reconstructions. You can see uh, the roof, uh, the combination between the women's synagogue and the synagogue, uh, the position of windows um, and uh, columns, uh, banks, walls, and other parts. So we have different models that we try to prove on the archaeological evidence. And this is the way you saw also the works of uh, Mark Grellert from Darmstadt, who is a famous reconstruction, uh, also synagogue architecture. Um, one uh, um, uh, attempt to, to near us uh, to the different models and faces. And also here we have the phenomenon that in 1424, the synagogue was um, yeah, uh, overtaken um, as uh, the Christian church for the court of Cologne as Saint Maria in Jerusalem. And the new archaeological evidence that we have is that it was not laid down, but it was only uh, changed its, lit its liturgical uh, interior to a Christian church. Uh, this is another uh, um, example of uh, a digital reconstruction of the Bima, which is a famous monument itself inside the synagogue, very well preserved. And uh, it's hard to reconstruct it because the fragments of the interior and also of the sculpture of the building are very small. And my last aspect before uh, Christiane take over is a project that uh, doesn't deal with the synagogue but with the UNESCO aspects. Uh, the Roman Praetorium, as I mentioned, I didn't show it uh, specially. Um, with, uh, is the heart of the lower German uh, frontier. And you know the Antonines Wall, the Hadrian's Wall, the Obergermanische Rätische Limes as UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we do an international project with the Netherlands, with our partners, to install the lower German Limes also as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And uh, the Praetorium, as you can see here, in a reconstruction uh, from the late antique, the fourth period, 
as a real palace architecture for Cologne, uh, will be also the heart of this lower German lemurs for the next future as we try it. Also combined, which I only want to uh, stress a little bit because of the timetable, is that this museum I mentioned, 600 meters uh, on the way through the parkour, 6,000 square meters archaeology, will set us for big problems in aspects of the climate and of the uh, preservation and conservation of the monuments. This is the humidity, it's of course the rain from above, it's the groundwater from down under, it's the sites uh, and the humidity of the people who uh, we are can't uh, hold up to uh, sweat when they visit the museum and uh, other things. Uh, and uh, these are also uh, uh, a term of an international research project for a climate simulation that we do for our former museum. So it's my part now to give you a short introduction to the exhibit concept. It, it will take seven minutes. <laughs> um, the synagogue is one of the key moments in presenting Jewish history and culture at this location. Based on finds from the synagogue and the layer of destruction as a result of the pogrom of 1349, we are able to show and explain Jewish life in the center of medieval Cologne. The concept which we will present to you in the following is work in progress. We are currently working with exhibition designers on the architectural realization of our content. Okay. The concept of this section refers in part to a classical Talmud page, focusing on the heart, the synagogue. Starting here, we will work with comments, links, and questions. Visitors will enter the permanent exhibit in the basement here. They start to explore the exhibition with an animated model of the medieval Jewish quarter that will give an overview on the medieval Jewish history in Cologne from the beginnings until 1424, the year when the Jews had to leave the city. Also involved in this model are the places in Cologne that are, are, the places in Cologne that are related to the Jewish history and were located outside the Jewish quarter. For example, the city gates that Jews had to defend, the cemetery, of course, and the city slaughterhouse, a place shared between Jews and Christians. Next up will be the synagogue itself. A film will show the building history and provide information on the two or three suggestions of interior and exterior reconstruction you saw before Thomas showed you. This is what we call research questions in the permanent exhibi exhibition. The interpretation of some features or finds is ambiguous. We therefore decided not to offer visitors any presumed truth, but rather to present the discussion on the objects. We don't know how the synagogue exactly looked like. Thus, we offer not only one probable reconstruction of the synagogue to the visitor, but two or three. That means that we display different possibilities concerning the design of this medieval building. Close to where the film is being shown, we will present finds that were probably parts of the bima, enabling the visitor to make a connection between what he or she saw in the film and the original objects. Archaeologists also found Hebrew inscriptions on stone fragments that could be related to the architecture of the actual synagogue building. This next exhibition element deals with the question what took place in the synagogue and especially in the synagogue of Cologne. It was not only a place for praying, but also used for school and judicial purposes. As we have learned from literary sources, it's another very important pillar of our conceptual work. Here we plan to show digital books of one or two religious manuscripts related to the Jewish community of Cologne. The Amsterdam Machsor was written in Cologne or in its surroundings in the first half of the 13th century and maybe the Mishneh Torah Kaufmann that has a colophon on the one of the last pages that refers to a member of the family Halevi of Cologne. And with the family Halevi, we walk further to a family tree of this family, which lived here or was connected to the place for some 250 years. We currently work on this, as you can see here. <laughs> Famous members of this Halevi family are, for example, Eliezer Benatan, who wrote about Gezerot Adnu, 
the Crusades of 1096, and his grandson, Eliezer ben Yoel Halevi, the Ra'avia, who wrote, who wrote about the Eruf in Cologne. Connected to this analog family tree are audio tracks on a media guide, with, for example, liturgical songs written by family members, poems, and rabbinical decisions to give an idea of Jewish scholarship and literary work in the Middle Ages. Close to this family tree, we will exhibit a group of very special finds, approximately 200 small pieces of slates dating back to the 14th century with different times of graffiti. They show us lists of names, caricatures, and drawings, as well as writing exercises such as the Aleph Bet, or the first word, word from the Torah, Bereshit, as you can see here. We try to exhibit them all and give detailed explanation and context with some of them. We, also, we will also deal with the period when the synagogue was turned into a chapel after 1424 and an exhibition area close to the synagogue. We have finds from this time as well, such as the tympanon of the chapel's court, as you can see on the right. This is where the permanent exhibition and the visitor will enter the Roman Praetorium, the palace of the Roman governor. Jewish history and culture will be further topics dealt with at different spots in the permanent exhibition in the basement. On the first floor of the new museum buildings, the exhibition will focus the modern Jewish history of Cologne from 1424 until today. Thank you. <laughs> 